So what do we begin with? Well, probably we begin with this one, the most interesting of all. So we zoom in. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 19, Timbres. In today's episode, we did a lot of reflection to get ourselves back in gear, feeding forward. We then continued working with our compress composition, which is this one over here. In particular, we tweaked some of the timing between the sections. Then we made some new recordings of it, and in particular, we were intrigued by looking at what's called the, the what is this called? This is called the pitch class wheel. So when we play the Compress 3663, this is what it looks like in MIDI. And while it's playing, notice that there are six colored notes and six totally black notes. Black, 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 black. Those notes are not used in the C3663 scale. We keep calling it a 556. Five, that means it has two five note scales that together add up to six notes. And there are the six notes. So we were really intrigued at how this visually shows the six notes being played and the six notes not being played. We then also updated our magic animation with our little 3D chain objects and then we found a tweak to the color hues that looks like this. If you watch the link on the right, it only has six colors. But the best part is when it gets going really fast. Any minute now. A lot of ripples coming off of it too. There we go. And the main, the only real main tweak we made was uh, here. We drove the color. Oh, I think we made the change here. No, we lost. Yeah, we made that change here. Interesting. Well, anyway, we liked it a lot, so we recorded that. So that was that was the chain animation. Then the really fun thing is we decided to work with timbres again. Go back to timbres. So we made a timbre score where we use marimba and oboe and we're going to we're going to play the whole thing for you but just to give you a little hint here it is here so enough of a hint there and then and then to shift gears we went into our 3D platform and decided to, you know, take on working with the piano kit idea, um, and we did. We ended up here making a basic set of cues, each one of which has a sound recorded in it, like the C4. And in order for that to work, uh, we had done this in a test already, but it was kind of a complicated feed chain process. What we figured out a way to do here was we just 
made 12 staffs and then we just muted everything except the one we wanted to export like the last one there which was our B sound we downloaded it into here the B sound the B sound, there it is which is this one and um, and then we uploaded it into our virtual world using our build upload sound and there it was and then after we uploaded it we still had some more work to do all of our sounds are here here it is b4 um we want we needed a script in here that's the b that's over here So there's the B4 sound, but we needed a script that would play it. And in the first test, it was a big pain because all of our scripts, we had to write a separate script for every every sound, but we were able to do a little bit of further research and use this snippet of code here that just looks up if there's any sounds in the, in the cube and swaps them right into place. And that allowed us to write a generic piano kit script that looks like this. It just says, hey, look for something and and then play it. So it, that made it very easy for us to make a 12-tone piano. And then, since we're working with C3663, Which, of course, is exactly what we're playing this thing. So th this kind of moved us forward in having um, in our 3D objects multi-dimensional expression. So what we're going to do now is play the timbered version of the compressed composition because we felt that it it added a lot of dimensionality. Well, we changed the tempo, we changed the instruments, and um, even changed some of the articulation. So we're going to play this for you, and we think you're going to like it.
So that concludes today's stream. What we like about this piece is that the timbres we feel play off of each other. Um, the oboe has a sharper exotic timbre compared to the piano, and it's good for, and we slowed it down to let it have some solo slows. But then when we let it have the fast solo, we want to staccato. Da, 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 da. And then the marimba, the, the, the range, the ability to go from very low to very high is similar to the piano. Um, and the, the velocity, the bang, 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 instead of bang, is similar. However, it has a softer, also exotic timbre. So um, if, you were, if you try to play long-lasting timbres on the chords, like we tried violin and it was just too eerie. It just, I mean, the, the, the vibrato was adding a little semitone variation and we're already using chords that are pretty tight already. And it just made it sound, if we wanted to, uh, as one of the, one of you guys said, a very spooky uh, paranoid effect, that would be perfect for it. So it's really remarkable how changing timbres changes the emotional impact of the piece we feel. Our ideas for next time are keep working with the piano kit um, and share the work to date and our good old friend to be determined. Thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. Do come back to our next stream. Do take care and do keep on streaming.